That's what I heard. All right, so this comes from Ian Carroll. Shout out to him. Ashton Kutcher has a long history of P. Diddy. And I'd be willing to bet he's got more than a few skeletons in his closet. Here's one of the most interesting ones so far. So let's play this real quick. Do you know the story from 2001 when a young Ashton Kutcher got stood up on a date and then the next morning that girl had been murdered? I'm just saying there might be a lot of skeletons in his closet. And this story is pretty weird. And it was a crazy unsolved murder case from the start. But then just last year, a new spicy detail dropped that is just tinfoil maximum. So on the morning of February 22nd, 2001, Ashley Ellerin's roommate got home from a night out and found her murdered, stabbed to death 47 times on the floor of the home that they shared. Whoa. She called police, obviously, and they started investigating. And then they got a call from Ashton Kutcher freaking out because he said, my fingerprints are gonna be on that door handle and I need to explain what happened. Remember, this is way back when he was just a few seasons into that 70s show and he had just starred in Dude, Where's My Car? And what Ashton oh. told police at the time is that he had met her a week before at a party at her house, they'd been acquaintances, and they decided to go on a date. They had a date scheduled for 8 p.m. on the 21st. They were gonna go out to a Grammys after party, but then he went to his buddy, Christy Swanson's house, to watch the Grammys. And he wound up watching the Grammys through eight o'clock. And he called her and was like, hey, I'm gonna be late at 824. She said, no problem. She had actually just gotten out of the shower and she was gonna blow dry her hair. She would speak to him soon. So then an hour and a half later at 10 p.m., he called her to let her know he was on his way, but she didn't pick up. So he redialed her a couple times she didn't answer and he eventually showed up at 10.45, more than two and a half hours after their date was supposed to start. He arrived Plus, at her house and not... I'm sorry. If you're going on a first date, you should not get the phone. Are you going to her house? I'm not going to her house. Keep in mind, this is, two, this is the early 2000s. Cell phones weren't as accessible. So... Most people had landlines, and if they did have, have a cell phone, it was like a piece of shit. And, I, like, back then, people wouldn't have their phones on them all the fucking time like it is now. So 2001 was a different era, bro. True, but go to her house, though? I mean, I think it's a bit more... I, I see where you're coming from, but I think it's a bit more plausible in 2001. Okay. A bit more plausible. Now it's like, now nah, you're a weirdo. What are you doing? Like, you know that chick has her phone on her. She ain't answering like it's a rat. On purpose, but yeah. But back then, people used landlines... Cell phones weren't a thing. We don't even know if she had a cell phone back then. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I can see why this would this would make sense in 2001. All the Zoomers in here are like, Myra, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes, guys, there was an era back in the early 2000s where a lot of people didn't have cell phones. All right. They used pay phones. They used landlines. Like, that's what it was. People used to walk and around with quarters all the time, guys, they so they can make yeah. pay, pay phone calls. They also use trains, too. By the way, Hype Train is right here incoming. Shout out to y'all on Twitch, man. This <laughs> way. Let's fucking go. go. Uh, hype go, Train going. Go, let's go, get this thing. Go, Guys, go, man. let's get to Hype Train 20, bro. Let's get to Hype Train fucking 20. We can. All right? Dance off? Let's do it. If we get to 20, we'll do a dance off. Let's go! Yeah! If we, if we get to 20. Hey! Listen. But we got to do 20. I'm making it happen for sure, just so you know. All right. There we go. But the door was locked. He couldn't get in. He tried the handle. And so he looked in the window, and he says he saw what appeared to be a red wine stain on the carpet. I didn't really think anything of it, he said. And then he left, thinking he had been stood up. They never investigated him. He was not a suspect. They didn't take any DNA from him. The case went unsolved for seven years. But it gets even weirder when you find out that the apartment manager of Ashley Ellerin's apartment, who is an aspiring actor, said he was having a sexual relationship with her, consensual. And he was in the house when Kutcher called. He said he was hang, just hanging out with her at, from about 7 to 8 p.m. on the night when this chick is about to go to a Grammys after party with Ashton Kutcher. She's just hanging out with her apartment manager. And then at some point she went and took a shower while he was still there. And then remember, she said she'd just gotten out of the shower and was going to blow dry her hair when Ashton Kutcher called her at 8.25 p.m. And then shortly after her shower, things turned physical. He doesn't, you know, just one thing led to another and it was mutual. And then they, you know, did the thing for about 15 minutes and then he left her apartment shortly what? after because he was expecting his own girlfriend to get home. He kind of got Pause. the phone call timing wrong.
They were always the H word. Sorry, W H O R word. Fours. Bro, that's crazy. You better go on date with Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, doing this three or four shit with your landlord. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, it is wild. Yo, back then with no freaking cell phones, really. Right, I'm telling y'all, man. Yo, devious, man. Three or fours, bro. Devious. Y'all want to wake them up? <laughs> Don't trip it, man. I'm oh, sorry. Three or four is gonna three or four. Damn, that's nasty work, bro. God damn. Yo, can you imagine wholesome girl taking a shower for me, throwing her here? Yeah, Cause she just got smashed. They were married. Yep. Demi Moore. They were married, right? Demi Moore. Yeah, Demi Moore. Yeah, that's old chick. I remember she, she, she was, was like in her forties when he was in his twenties, bro. Yeah. All right, let's let's keep going, rolling with this. This is wow. an interesting story. I didn't even notice shit. Hey, man, rent days pay pay up. <laughs> what the heck? Ooh, I'm options though. No oh, mic options. What? Yeah, play the clip, nigga. Demi being thirsty as usual. <laughs> yeah, play the clip, man. <laughs> Come on, man. He said it was at 8.15 that the call happened, then they were like, no, it was 8.24. And he's like, yeah, okay, I must have left later. He also had a fresh uh, I'm on Shay. his arm that Send detectives it to, uh, noted Discord if you in can. the report. Never gets explained in the various reporting I could find. When the defense attorney questioned the apartment manager, he said, did you ever tell police that Miss Ellerin was trying to conquer you? Weird language. Just that she was very attracted to me and that she wanted me to be a part of her life. Also weird language. And then, when the defense attorney asked if the apartment manager had ever spoken to his then girlfriend, now wife, about this infidelity, he says, we never discussed it. So you continue to lie to her all these years? No, Durbin re replied quickly. But you never discussed it? But you didn't lie? But in all the looking I could do through all the different media reports that happened on this relatively high profile case, I didn't find anywhere that they mentioned taking DNA samples from the semen. And the case went unsolved for seven years, despite Ashton Kutcher being there with a pretty shaky alibi as to why he wasn't there earlier when he said he would be there and only showed up later because he was hanging out at his Hollywood friend's house. And despite this other dude that had a key to the apartment having admitted to consensual sex with her right as she was supposed to be going on a date with this other actor, no DNA tests, no investigation apparently. And then seven years later, in a different town, in a different state, this guy named Michael Gargiulo gets arrested for this other murder attempt. Where in 2008, this woman was sleeping in her home and she was stabbed in her bed. She testified that she managed to fight off her attacker by grabbing the knife blade with both hands and was able to kick him off of her. And at some point in the struggle, he cut his wrist, leaving a trail of blood on her uh, bed and in the alley on her way out. And as he ran out, she recalled the man saying, I'm sorry, as he ran away. Here is some MK Ultra tinfoil for you. The defense attorney for him claimed that Michael Gargulio was in an amnestic state when he attacked Murphy and couldn't remember hurting her, and he had regained his senses while still in her apartment, hence the apology as he ran out. Oh, by the way, found a blue surgical uh, pause real quick. With a few drops of Ian's actually live right now with uh Sneeko. I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. No, no, I, I was gonna have him come tonight, but uh, he had this thing with Sneeko, so we'll bring him on. Cool, shout out to Ian. Uh, I think it's him, Aiden, and Academics, and Ian. Wait, all of them? Yeah, right all, now? all four right now. Yeah, let me look here. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, all That's four of them are on a stream. They shut out us, man. Come on, man. What, what are they talking about? We can, we can react to it. Oh. No, we can't. We can't because Aiden's under. Yeah, we can't react to it. Oh. Uh, yeah, no. It's fine. All right, sorry. Go ahead. That'd be funny, though. Bruno's blood on it outside of her front door. And then they say that they found a bunch of other identical blue surgical booties in the suspect's attic. And so they caught him for this, this other murder in 2008. And then he started getting tied to all these other stabbings in other places nearby to where he had lived in the past, despite not actually having any forensic evidence tying him to the scenes other than circumstantial and witness testimony that came forward later. Michael Gargiulo actually used this as his defense. He basically gave up and said, he said, I know the evidence is much stronger with Michelle Murphy. That's the elephant in the courtroom. You have to judge each case separately. So he basically said, yeah, we know he kind of did the last murder. 
What I'm saying in court today is that he's getting tied to all these other murders with no evidence. No physical evidence, no DNA, no fingerprints, no hair samples were found tying Gargulo to the scene in the Ellerin case. And the case didn't even wrap up until 2019 when wow. Ashton finally took the witness stand about this murder that happened all the way back in 2001. And then just hey, last year, 18 years. a really weird detail got dropped when Ashton and Mila's friend, Danny Masterson, got convicted of multiple rapes and sentenced to 30 years to life in prison. Remember that 70s show? And they wrote these amazing letters about how great of a guy Danny was trying to get his sentence reduced, along with like 30 other Hollywood people. The letters got leaked, there was huge backlash. And one of Danny's ex-girlfriends slash rape victim posted to her Instagram story something super spicy. It has mostly been scrubbed from the web, but you can find all sorts of people that refer to it and they all agree on what it said. Um, so this is a direct quote. Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model, Danny Masterson, keeps for you. Ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. She alleges that Kutcher called his team of publicists and Danny Masterson on the night of that murder before calling police the next day. Why did Ashton Kutcher call his best friend Danny Masterson and his publicists the night that his date got murdered, or rather, the night that he got stood up by his date, and then later found out that she had been murdered. There's also conflicting evidence from Ellerin was attacked from behind and her throat was cut from left to right, indicating that her killer was left-handed and like, got her all at once from behind, versus that there were numerous defensive wounds on her hands and her right forearm. Over the years, some people have speculated that Ashton did it. Other people have speculated that Ashton didn't do it, but he actually entered the home when he arrived there and saw the body and freaked out and left and didn't report it. Personally, I have my own theories, but I'm not gonna go claiming them on the internet without any clear evidence. The only claim that I'm gonna make is that Megan Fox deleted all of her Instagram posts. Usher tried to delete all of his Twitter posts, but he kind of failed at it. <laughs> and all you other Hollywood criminals and psychos, you can try, but it's too late. It's all coming down around you. 2024 is the year that all lies will be exposed is in Lizzie McGuire. She also has wow. an album out. Um, she's going to be in a movie called Cheaper by the Dozen. And she's one of the girls that we're all... Wait, was that that show Punk? Yeah. 18, along with the Olsen twins. Any 15-year-old... Yo. Along with the Olsen twins. Bro. Any 15... What do you do if you see a dead body in a house? Call 911 immediately. Not so, run and call your publicist. So why do you wait... Why do you wait... Well, we know. Yeah. Probably why. For obvious reasons. Damn. Oh, wow. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah. So. What, what's, uh, yo, that is crazy. And then here, let me give you this other link too that has to do with this stuff. That's some like. That's a very, very interesting. CSI murder type, type of kind of show, bro. That's some very, very interesting stuff. Here. Wow. Also, I got another link for you, Bills, to play. He just said 15 and... Oh, yeah, yeah, the second one, yeah, yeah, yeah. For to be 18? Shipwrecked, yeah. Bro, that's wild. Yo, Cat Williams was right. He mentioned this year is the year of exposing. Bruh, Hollywood is cooked. Possibly. But see, if I was a high-level executive at Hollywood, I'll get Diddy out of there. Like, completely. Yeah. So he don't say shit. Okay. All right. Um, so, guys, quick word from our sponsor real fast. You know we don't mess around when it comes to leveling up, and that goes for your coffee, too. If you're still drinking that sugary shit, you are already started your morning off wrong. 1775 Coffee's protein creamer is what real men use to start their day. 10 grams of whey protein per serving, designed to build muscle and boost metabolism. Most people are tossing whey protein into their coffee, but we took it a step further and made a creamer with whey protein already built in. No added sugar, just protein. They just dropped this protein creamer along with a whole new lineup. In addition to the classic dark and medium roast, you'll find new coffee pods and a brain-boosting mushroom blend that'll have you focused like a sniper locked in on CNN. Don't... 
Don't start your morning funding the wo- wait. Don't start your morning funding the woke mob and dumping garbage into your body. Do it right with 1775 Coffee. Use code Fresh to get 15 percent off. Guys, I'm drinking 1775 Coffee right now, man. As we walk it like we talk it over here, guys. And they got one that has a protein blend, man. So definitely go show them support, guys. Rumble is. This is why Rumble is the home base for us, guys. So God forbid we get banned everywhere else. You guys know exactly where to find us, man. This is the home base. Obviously, we're trying to grow on other platforms as well. But everything is to come back to the home base over here at Rumble and Castle Club, guys. Because over here we can speak freely. We can say what we got to say. And, um, yeah, we're not going to bow down to the woke mob over here, guys. But we got to go ahead and still reach the normies to show them the light. Okay? So we we go into the into the hornet's nest for you guys. Fresh literally went in the hornet's nest last week for, weekend for y'all. So it was tough, man. Shout out to someone that just up to the channel, Hyro. Just yeah. up to the channel. Shout, Shout out to 1775 Coffee. 